Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, here with a look at the Make Toy, Make Toy, Make Make, a look at the new third-party battle tanker for the quote-unquote G2 Laser Prime of Reveal the Shield and United Fame. Before we begin, I should mention that I used United Laser Prime for being a better color match to the new pelvis. I'll go on to mention that among my United Laser Prime's abysmal quality control issues was a nearly stripped screw that made swapping the pelvis very difficult. Anyway, let's check out this debut release from the men of Make Toy. The trailer is an excellent match for the figure it's augmenting. The wheels even have some synchronous sculpting. It resembles the classic G2 container despite a lack of an enormous sticker on the side. The only major issue I have with it is that while the trailer hitch serves as a turning axis, it's very difficult to do so without lifting the vehicle off the ground and fiddling with stuff. By the way, there are a few 3mm clip system points on the trailer just in case you feel it needs some extra firepower. Or blades. Cause nothing says badass trailer like blades hanging off the side of a flammable oil tanker. Battle Tanker also provides a new head for Prime. I'm using the original new head that required heating before popping it onto the ball joint. Most of you will probably receive a different two-part head that is a lot less risky to attach. I didn't have much trouble, I just soaked it in boiling water for a while, then sanded the ball a little bit, stuck it on, and it seems okay. I like the sculpt for its hard angles and well-defined optics. It feels a lot more heroic than the original and somewhat angrier cranium. Yanking off a few chunks of the trailer, Laser Prime's robot mode gets a beefy embiggening to go with his new head. While the new crotch plate uses the newly installed custom pelvis, everything else uses the toy's own engineering to plug into place. Most interestingly, Prime's small hands hold onto his new ones, while his forearm add-ons use his 3mm clips. The instructions recommend raising his chest up slightly, but I really don't mind how it looks compressed. One could stick something inside there to ensure a taller chest if one desired to, though. I love what this does for his silhouette. All posability is preserved, and his new ankles and feet offer slightly more solid posability than his originals. There is definitely a Japanese robot vibe, with most of his embeefery being in his extended and bulked out legs. Between the superherofication of his aesthetics and the generally unified color scheme, I really like this part of the add-on. A notable part of the Battle Tanker's price tag comes in the form of its LED-enabled sword. The main issue I have with this is that while the battery pack is clearly designed to mount on Prime's back, I just can't get it to solidly lock in place without feeling like I'm crushing the LED wire. That aside, the 3mm clipping mount lets you store the sword back there, and luckily the wire doesn't really get in the way all that much when it's fully unwrapped. The sword is cool if a little scourgy in its redness. The LED feature blazes up the hilt, but the blade itself needs a dark room for the effect to be very visible in its core. And even then it's a little bit faint. I really wonder what a blue blade would have looked like. There is also an alternate non-lighting blade that looks a lot less Super Robot-esque. I'm okay with it, but really it's a bonus, if anything. And speaking of bonuses, you get another copy of the Unlit Blade along with a handle to use with Generations Drift if you got the first edition of Battle Tanker. While it lacks the kanji, it's also a lot less floppy and still stores beneath his vehicle mode. There are also two double-barreled guns for Prime to wield. They look like guns. Anyway. This isn't in the instructions, but there has been official photography showing a base-style configuration for the battle tanker. It's very simple, but I think it gets across the feel of a temporary defense station. That said, it's also as bare-bones as can be if you don't spruce it up with 3mm clip system ordnance. It definitely feels more like a fan mode, despite Make Toy photographing this configuration themselves. I guess that also may explain why it got left out of the instructions and packaging. The Battle Tanker's final surprise is that it can transform into a sort of weapons emplacement backpack. By the way, the leg missile pods can be used at any time if you want. The conversion is simple, but the instructions do not make things very clear in regards to how to swivel the base of the quote-unquote arms. It's really tricky to figure out how to get this to work. You basically are trying to rotate the circular base that the multi-jointed arms stem from. After that, it uses a fairly clever clip-on point with Prime's backpack, and everything else kind of swivels into place. I was really surprised by how much I like this mode. All the photos made me think it would be an afterthought at best, but it is deceptively well thought out, aside from the goofy panel hat that hovers over Prime's head. I love the flip-down visor, though. 
and I also love that he somehow retains decent posability with all this gear weighing him down. It's kind of thanks to that complicated web of multi-jointed arms, and by web I mean two. There's even a fold-down stabilizer, though its attachment to the LED pack can make things awkward. I often just set that part aside. This mode is insane in a way that will probably make or break the add-on set for you depending on how you take it. Make Toy made an interesting decision to debut with the Battle Tanker. It is a very niche set, but I feel it accomplishes what it sets out to do in making a small and very anime love letter to the Laser Prime concept. It makes several decisions that really do rely on your aesthetic taste, but despite some hesitations on my part, it really did click with me. My biggest problem with it is that despite accommodating so much component storage, the original figure's sword has no obvious place to be stored. Since it is also the trailer hitch, it really does need to be present somewhere. The Battle Tanker also comes at a steep price, harkening back to add-ons like the City Commander and Protector trailers. I think it ends up being worth it for its LED gimmick and build quality, but it is definitely more of a luxury item than a bang-for-your-buck bargain. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this video has helped you come to a decision on the Battle Tanker. Whatever your opinion on the set, this does bode well for Make Toys' future releases on a simple build quality level, and I'm looking forward to seeing how things like their microbot or giant projects turn out. Make Toy, Make Toy, Make, Ore wa Make, Shimashou, De Arimas.